Good evening. Leicestershire Police, who are investigating a fire at a house which claimed the lives of four people, said there is no evidence they were involved in the death of a man less than a mile away. Detectives had said they were looking into the possibility the blaze was a revenge attack. Rajiv Popat reports. The Jumeir Mosque was packed with worshippers today as special prayers were held to remember four people who died. In the early hours of yesterday morning, a blaze ripped through this house in Leicester, killing Shanila Tufik Sattar and her two sons, 15-year-old Bilal and 17-year-old Jamal, and her 19-year-old daughter Zainab. The family, who are originally from Pakistan, lived in Ireland before they moved to Leicester five years ago to learn more about the Islamic faith. People here in Spinney Hills are struggling to come to terms with the news. The community is absolutely devastated by this incident where a family has been wiped out completely for no reason at all whatsoever. Just seven hours earlier, a man named locally as Anton Akpom was found injured in Kent Street half a mile away. He later died in hospital. Three people have been arrested in connection with his death, a 19-year-old man and two 19-year-old women. Today, at a press conference, Leicestershire Police said there was no evidence to suggest any of the family members killed in the fire was involved in the incident at Kent Street. Inquiries are still ongoing to establish any link between the two incidents themselves. And I am saying that there's absolutely no link that the people who were involved in the fire at the address on Wood Hill were in any way responsible for the assault on Kent Street. Mrs. Tofik Sattar's husband, Muhammad, a surgeon, was working in Ireland at the time of the fire. You've spent time with Dr. Tofik Sattar. It's hard to imagine what he's going through. It's very, very difficult. I mean, I just lost my mum in June, uh, one, and he's lost the entire family. And I think it's very, very devastated for him. When I met him, it was something that um, I could only grieve with him to be able to feel his sorrows. Leicestershire Police confirm the blaze was started deliberately. Two murder investigations are underway. They're appealing for anyone with information to contact them. Rajiv Pop at ITV News, Leicester. Ten people have been arrested on suspicion of murder after a body was found at a house in Walsall. Detectives searching for a missing woman sealed off a house on Victory Lane last night. Five men and five women are now being questioned by police. A new memorial to remember fallen soldiers has been unveiled at the National Memorial Arboretum in Staffordshire. Family and friends of those who have died helped to open it during a special service. Finally, a place to remember her father. Seven-year-old Tegan was only a baby when her dad died of a heart attack while on duty. Until now, all she's had are replicas of his medals. It's always nice for her to come to know that she's got something special, that she can come see her dad's name and I remember him as well. It's quite a distance, but you know his name's here, so whenever we're up in this area, we'll always pop in and, and, and come and see the memorial. Serving soldiers helped the Royal British Legion to design this new memorial, and it lies in the grounds of the National Memorial Arboretum in Staffordshire, the home of the Armed Forces Memorial, where all of the names of those who've died in combat since the Second World War are inscribed. We decided that it was appropriate to put something that would be more central and more long-lasting, and it is intended to be an everlasting memorial. And of course, people um, who have got lost ones can apply to the Legion and say, may I have a, an everlasting poppy planted on behalf uh, or in memory of one of my relatives. Aaron Shelton, who lives in Derbyshire, planted a poppy during the service today in memory of his friends. He was injured in Afghanistan in 2007 when the vehicle they were travelling in hit a roadside bomb. He had his leg amputated, but some of his friends were killed. It's not a cenotaph like you get in your churches, your town centres. This one's a unique one that was designed by, or helped design by, um, service personnel, ex-service personnel, um, and it's to remember everyone. Um, service that I did is going to live with me for the rest of my life. My injuries is going to li live with me for the rest of my life and my mates that I've lost are uh, never going to be forgotten and I'm going to make sure of that. The Royal British Legion hopes more families will apply to plant an everlasting poppy here, but on day one, it's already brimming with tributes. 
Teaching unions have held an education rally in Nottingham today as part of an ongoing dispute over pay and conditions. The unions are unhappy with government plans to reform the school curriculum and to link teachers' pay with performance in the classroom. On the 1st of October, teachers are taking part in a national strike. The government says it's disappointed the unions are taking the action because it will disrupt pupils' education. We have tried for those two years to get the Secretary of State to engage with us sensibly to address the concerns of teachers. But he's recklessly ignoring that, he refuses to engage and quite frankly the anger and frustration of teachers is such now that we've had no alternative but to actually call for strike action. A Birmingham MP has called for a stronger sentence for a lorry driver caught texting moments before running over a 13-year-old girl. Hope Fennell was killed while cycling home from school in Kingsheath two years ago. Roger Godsiff has written to the Attorney General after Darren Foster was sentenced to six months in jail and a one-year driving ban for dangerous driving and perverting the course of justice. Now football and it was a mixed day for our teams in the Premier League today. Aston Villa were beaten 2-1 by Newcastle but West Brom's first goal of the season proved to be a last minute equaliser as they drew at Fulham. Stoke meanwhile picked up a crucial point against Man City. In the Championship it was a huge win for Derby County who thrashed Millwall 5-1 while there were wins for Leicester City and Nottingham Forest but Birmingham City were beaten at IQPR. In rugby, and Leicester Tigers suffered a narrow defeat to Bath at the Recreation Ground in the Aviva Premiership. Bath dominated the first half and entered the break 21-3 ahead after this superb try from Matt Banahan. But the Tigers fought back and closed the gap to just four points after this try from Veroniki Gonova. But the Tigers failed to score a game as Bath won 27-20. And now, something to aspire to if you're growing your own veg. A man from Nottinghamshire has won a prize for growing the heaviest onions. One of them weighed almost seven kilograms. Peter Glazebrook from Newark won nearly half of all the prizes in the giant vegetable category at the Harrogate Show, including for the heaviest cabbage and the longest runner bean. And now it's time for a look at the weather forecast for the weekend. Here's Joe Blythe. Hello again, good evening. I hope you've had a lovely weekend so far. I think we've probably seen the best of the bright, fine weather today and there has been a fair amount of cloud around. Tomorrow all change, some wet and windy weather on the cards, particularly later on in the day. Winds are going to increase in strength and we'll see some persistent rain for a time across the Midlands around the middle of the afternoon. This is the rain that will be pushing down from the northwest by the end of tonight, moving in quite quickly and pushing away fairly promptly tomorrow evening but not before we see a couple of hours of rather steady rain around the middle part of the day. And coupled with that, we've got some fairly strong winds. It's a frontal system moving in from the northwest. Now, as you can see, if we put the pressure chart on and those isobars, they're fairly tightly packed. So quite gusty winds across the region as well tomorrow. So that's then, back to this evening. A bit of brightness to round off the day, but cloud is beginning to thicken up to the north and west Midlands by the end of this evening as we go into tonight. That said, for many of us, the start of the night will be clear and quite quite chilly. Five or six Celsius, maybe a touch lower in rural spots. And then that cloud beginning to thicken up ahead of the front. So temperatures just lifting a little bit as we get towards tomorrow morning. Now tomorrow, a dry start initially further south, but we will see that front sweeping its way southwards and eastwards. Probably by lunchtime, it's into the north and west Midlands, becoming more persistent and widespread that rain during the afternoon. So wet for a time for all of us. One or two heavy bursts and with the strong winds, it's likely to be quite unpleasant. I would have thought the roads could be a bit tricky as well with lots of surface water and spray. So not a nice afternoon, but gradually clearing through. And I think during the evening, maybe some late brightness around dusk. It's pretty cool. 15 or 16 Celsius isn't going to feel very nice, I'm afraid, tomorrow. Looking ahead, a little bit brighter over the next few days. Still quite unsettled and rather breezy. Bye bye. Well, that brings you up to date. We're back tomorrow night at half five. And don't forget, you can log on to the website to keep up to date with all the latest news, itv.com slash central. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.